and you can wave your hands and they call your name. Here we have Kak Uti Baslastri, Kak Mesha Andrianti, Kak Muhammad Janwar Irshad, Kak Shifa Khairunisa, Kak Muhammad Rizki Gunadi, and lastly we have Kak Amelia Nurbani Amin. So that's all totally we have eight presenters. But, be, but before we go any further, I'd like to remind everyone that we have a regulation for this webinar. Let me read for you. First, this webinar will last for one hour. Second, the only language used to communicate is English, includes for the question. Third, all participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. Next, all participants must turn off the audio during the presentation. The presentation will be held in five minutes for each presenter. The moderator will set the time to remind the presenter and the Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. Question can be typed in the chat box since the early presentation. Anyone interested in talking directly to the presenters is pleased to raise your hand and we will facilitate you if we still have time. And for the last, if you could not get your answer, don't be worried, because the presenters will send the answer via email. All right, without any further ado, let's begin the presentation with the first presenters. Here I have Ka Uti Badiati Hasana, who will deliver about the vocabulary learning strategies of foreign language students. For Ka Uti, please, five minutes from now. All right, thank you for the moderator for giving me time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say thank you for your coming in, in my presentation. It's good to see you all. Today, I will present the material about the vocabulary learning strategies uh, of foreign language students. Next slide, please. So what is the definition of vocabulary learning strategies? According to Kamet and Kapper, 1989, uh, vocabulary learning strategies is technique which students use to comprehend, store, and remember information and skill. And beside that, Smith mentioned that the process by which the process by which information is obtained, stored, retrieved, retrieved, and used. The next slide, please. So, do you know why vocabulary learning strategies is very important? Chamo 2004 said that learning strategies are the concepts to and action the learners take in order to achieve learning goal. So, what does it mean? Tito Hang and Avriazi 2017 argue that applying uh, strategies in learning vocabulary are useful to help the student in learning vocabulary and reaching their language a learning goal. And then Hang 2011 believed that learning vocabulary as basic constituent of learning a language. The word word, the more word we know, we better we understand what we read and listen to. The next slide, please. Smith Taxonomy 1997 is comprehensive uh, inventory of vocabulary learning strategies. He divided uh, the strategies into two groups. The first is discovery strategies. Strategies uh, are used to discover a new word uh, the strategy are determination strategy and social strategy. Determination strategy used by an individual when faced with discovering a new word meaning without resort to another person expertise. The word meaning can be discovered to guessing from one structural knowledge of a language, guessing from an uh, first language cognate, guessing from context or using uh, references material. And then social strategies use interaction with other people to improve language learning. Learners can ask teacher to or classmate uh, 
to, to find information about new word and the answer can be in a number of ways such as synonym and translation. And the second is the consolidation strategies. These strategies uh, are used to remember to remember a word when it has been introduced. The strategy are social strategy, memory strategy, cognitive strategy, and metacognitive strategy. Social strategies study vocabulary knowledge with other people. Learners can learn or practice the word in group work or interact to other people. And memory strategies, uh, we are known as mnemonic. They, uh, they involve relating the word to be retained with other, with other people using some from imagery or grouping. And then metacognitive strategies. Exhibit the common in process about planning, monitoring, or evaluating the best way to the best way uh, to study. The next slide, please. The next slide, please. Okay, the conclusion, Smith 1997 uh, state that vocabulary learning strategy used by the learners depend on a number of factors such as motivation, proficiency, and culture. The strategy are discovery, determination strategy, and social strategy. And then cons consolidation, social strategy, memory strategy, cognitive strategy, and metacognitive strategy. So the next slide, please. Here I have references for my sources. Well, I think that's all from me. And thank you for your kind attention to join the presentation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Kauti. It's such a good beginning for the presentation session. So now we know that we can use uh, strategies for learning vocabulary to make it more optimal. All right, now we will turn the time over to the second speaker. Here we have Kastrin and Anuzakia who will deliver about what should I do to improve my vocabulary. All right, for Katsin and the time is yours. All right, thank you to the moderator for giving me the time today for my paper. Is my sound audible? Yes, it is. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. Good morning. How are you today? I hope you are in a good condition, yeah? I mean. First of all, I would like to say thank you for your participation in this webinar, also to the previous presenter. I hope this webinar can give you a new insight about vocabulary. All right, talk about vocabulary. Have you all questioning to yourself about how to improve your vocabulary? Like, what should I do to improve my vocabulary? All right, my name is Nandan Zakia, the student of English Education Department from Sliwang University. We will share the answer to the question like what is vocabulary, why is it important, and how to improve your vocabulary with five ways that I have included in this paper. Next slide, please. Well, what is vocabulary? As defined by Hutch and Brown, vocabulary is a list or set of words for a particular language or individual speaker might use. Then, next slide, please. Then, why is it important? So, Smero claimed that, next slide, please claim that vocabulary is essential in a second and foreign language acquisition. And without its appropriate knowledge, we as the learners cannot understand others or express our feelings. Also, they believe that the more frequently exposed to vocabulary, learners are more confident to understand and interpret the meaning of some unknown words from the context. Next slide, please. 
Then how to improve the vocabulary for English fluency? Next slide, please. Nikki mentioned that there are five ways to improve your vocabulary. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide, please. All right, we can continue. All right, the first and the second are reading and writing. Well, they have a correlation like when you read a popular book like novel or there's so many words on it or illustrated book like comics or children book. Next slide, please. Then you find uh, the unfamiliar words, so you can write them on your special book for vocabulary, or you can write it as a flashcard. So what is flashcard? I will give you the example in the last, okay? And after you write the new words, you can apply them when you are journaling or make a diary. So your vocabulary will stick in your head. So while reading and writing, does he believe that reading not only teaches you new words, but you learn words that are actually in use? While writing as a Nikki is an easy way to incorporate new vocabulary into sentences and to check your understanding of new words. So you can see that those all the activities that you can do. Next slide, please. So the third and the fourth are listening and watching. They also have correlation too. Next slide, please. Okay. So when watching like movie, speech, or vlogs on YouTube, of course you are listening too, and also reading and writing too. Um, because um, you will read the subtitle on the video of your words or the lyrics of the song that you listen to, and you will write unfamiliar words that you found, right? As the learners, of course we have to do that. Well, while listening and watching, Nikki mentioned that listening to everything in English can profoundly impact how we learn to pronounce and use new words. While watching a foreign movie with subtitle will impress your vocabulary, and then those are fun and motivating ways to learn English. And the, the last you must do after you the first to the far is practice with conversing. Next slide, please. Conversing uh, or to have conversation or talk with someone who also learners of English, like with your friends or with yourself or with native speakers you know, or you can join a study group or meet uh, with other local people in English, to practice your vocabulary for better English skill. Why? Because as mentioned by Nikki, that conversing allows you to gain valuable input on your word usage, also pronunciation while expanding your vocabulary. The key to this way is to make a commitment to yourself and your partner to speak English uh, because, because practice makes everything. So next slide, please. Well, the, the conclusion is we are not that there are many ways to learn English, but reading, writing, listening, watching, and speaking in all in English are the easier, cheaper, and fine ways to do. Just do it regularly and make a commitment to better results. Well, this is the last my presentation. If there are any questions, you can type in the chat box or hit me up on email or Instagram. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I give it back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Canada. So now I know that vocabulary is an essential thing in learning new languages. And we should master vocabulary to master all the language skills. All right. Now we'll move to the next speaker. It is Kak Ratna Dewi Sulastri who will deliver about the fun ways to improve your vocabulary mastery. For Kak Ratna, please five minutes from now. All right, uh, thank you for the moderator for giving me the challenge. Um, while waiting for the screen, I would like to say thank you to the participants um, who already attended uh, this webinar. I hope every single one of you can get benefit from this uh, event. I also want to say thank you for the previous presenter who have explained about the material. Um, before I continue the, present, the presentation, I would like to ask you, are you a beginner English learner? If it is, what is the first thing you do to learn it? Yeah, 
as we know that vocabulary will be the first thing you learn when you want to mastering English language or another language maybe. Yeah, so here I'm Ratna Dewi Sulastri from Kelibang University going to share you the fun ways to, Im uh, to improving your mastery, uh, to improve your vocabulary mastery. All right, uh, next slide, please. As I said before that vocabulary will be the first thing that you will learn when you want to mastering English language. Vocabulary is the base of language acquisition. This statement uh, supported by Alderson in 2005, he said that vocabulary knowledge is fundamental to comprehending and producing a second language. And also, as uh, Sumarnov and Azimova in 2020 believed that vocabulary is an important factor for language learning because inadequate vocabulary knowledge leads learners to encounter difficulties in language learning. All right? From that, we know that um, that's why vocabulary is so important to be mastering. Without knowing vocabulary, we cannot catch the words that we listen. Without knowing vocabulary, we cannot understand the text that we read, right? However, mastering vocabulary is not easy because there are a lot of vocabulary in a language. But it will be easier if you're learning vocabulary in a fun way. Uh, we can do it by learning vocabulary compatible with our hobbies, for example, reading. Next slide, please. Yeah, as the previous presenter explained that reading can help you to improving your um, vocabulary mastery. So here I recommend you to doing narrow reading. Do you know what is narrow reading? Let me tell you. Narrow reading is read a lot of text with the same topic. And the benefit from narrow reading to uh, your vocabulary mastery explained by Kylie Kia in 2017, let me read it for you. Learning vocabulary can be improved through encouraging learners to read on similar topics, especially in their field of study and or interest. In this way, they can be exposed to more frequently used structure and words, which may improve their reading comprehension, enable them to take leisure. Yeah, from that we know that by doing narrow reading, uh, the reader will find the same word frequently, so those words will be familiar for them. All right, the next slide, please. Um, the next fun way is to learn vocabulary is listen to the music or the song. Song can be an effective way to learn vocabulary for the beginner because songs are easy to access and most of us like to listen to the music, right? And the repetition of words makes uh, the listener be familiar um, with that word, right? This statement supported by Kuzmiak in 2016. Learning through songs may be a good method of vocabulary memorization because lyrics are sung repeatedly and key tunes help to remember them. It needs to be, to, be noticed, to be noticed that because of the easy access to music, everyone may benefit from it. For more information, uh, not only uh, give new vocabulary, but songs also can give, um, can teach the listener how to pronounce it. Okay, the next slide, please. And then another fun way is to learn vocabulary is watching. I will not explain this more because in the previous presentation, uh, this one already explained. I just want to tell you that the audio visual storyline can make the movie become an interesting media to learn. So the learners will not easy to feel bored. And in addition, not only give me vocabulary, a uh, movie also can teach how to pronounce and how to use those words. And finally, um, next slide, please. We come to the conclusion. In conclusion, uh, vocabulary is the first thing that you will learn when you want to master another language. Improving vocabulary might be difficult, but it will be easier if we learn vocabulary with the fun ways. There are many fun ways to learn vocabulary. It depends on your interest. And in the right side, I provide other uh, references. Yeah, and the next slide, please. I think uh, that's all the presentation from me. Uh, I'm sorry for the mistake. And if you have any question, you can type it on the chat box or you can send me through my email. All right. Um, thank you for your nice attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Karatna, for sharing with us. It is definitely a very enjoyable and very fun way to improve our vocabulary. All right, for all the participants, I remind you once again, if you have any question during the presentation, you can type it in the chat box. And don't forget to fill the attendance as well on the link provided in the chat box. Thank you. All right. Our topic of discussion is getting more interesting from time to time. Now we have Kak Meisha Andrianti will deliver about without realizing it. These five habits can improve our vocabulary. For Kak Meisha, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, moderator. Hello, everyone. My name is Meisha Andrianti. It's great to see you. Uh, I will say thank you for previous presenter have to explain the material. And today I will present about without, without realizing it, these five habits can improve your vocabulary. And uh, before I start, I will inform that I will uh, skip the part that has been explained by the previous presenter. And I'm here to strengthen this material. Next slide, please. Okay, let's be started. Do you realize, do you ever think why you can understand some words in English language? The, the answer is, if you think about this, it means that you uh, know the vocabulary and the meaning in your language. Next slide, please. Okay, there are some definition according some expert, but let me explain, uh, let me read one uh, of them. Number one, according to Lin's state that vocabulary is the collection of words that individual knows. And why vocabulary is important? Because it's one element that links for skills. There is speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And how I can I improve without realizing it? And what kind of things that can increase vocabulary? These five habits can unconsciously improve your vocabulary. Next slide, please. Okay, the first point is often listen song in English. Okay, why? Because from the rhythm, lyrics, reputation, and by implementing the songs, it will make us more easier to understanding the meaning of words and memorizing the vocabulary. Next, please. Reading in English language. Okay, I will read uh, according to expert. Termburi states that without grammar, very little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. It means that if you want to uh, learning English or learning vocabulary, you uh, the basic important is you should know vocabulary and you don't worry about the grammar. You should know the vocabulary first. And next, please. Watch movie with English subtitles. Yes, it can increase your vocabulary, like previous presenter tells us. And if you for for you who like watching movie or maybe YouTube in English subtitles or English language, of course, correctly congratulation, you increase your listening, reading, and speaking skills. And according to Mouth Maslav Cha, movies are considered considered a storage, not only entertain, but also education in different setting. It means that you entertain yourself, but it also educational too. And try to use English subtitle to increase your vocabulary. Next, please. The fourth point is playing games in English language. Yes, according to Upperman, you can see uh, on my slide, it makes practice English with a fun way, and it helps you to memorize the vocabulary in a fun way that, that's both educational and fun. And this point based on my experience too, that I don't know and then I don't realize why I can know some words in English language and on my, on my language too. And when I was child, I liked to playing games or educational games in English language setting. For you, uh, want for you want to try uh, playing this game? You can download in uh, Google Play Store. Maybe there are so many games, uh, educational games like For Shake, For Pix One Words, and so many games. You can find it on Google Play Store. And next, the last point. 
talk in court missing. Talk in court missing is uh, one language into another by speaker in communication. And according to uh, according by Gumpers, you can see on my uh, PowerPoint, I state that mixing code is part of one language by speaker while essentially using another language and it is uh, good for you who like increase your vocabulary and maybe for you like uh, speaking in english you have, without utilizing it you direct, directly use in your everyday life and you try to talk with your friend, friend. and this habit is good uh, is make you easier to to increase your vocabulary and memorize your vocabulary. Also the pronunciation too. And your friend also can uh, correct you if you are wrong. And the last is the conclusion. The conclusion is vocabulary plays an important role in language acquisition. These roles such as reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And however, learning vocabulary is considered to be taking an experience. And the last is if you have any question, uh, you can chat me on the chat box or maybe you can email me on my google mail next slide please next slide please okay, and uh, it is my references uh, next step, slide please yeah. so thank you very much for your attention i give back to the moderator all right, thank you very much, Kamesha, for sharing with us. Um, now, um, we will turn the time over to the next speaker. Here we have Kam Muhammad Zanwar Ishad, who will deliver about can we improve our vocabulary through songs? For Kam Muhammad Zanwar Ishad, please, five minutes. OK. Uh, thank you, Ria. Uh, thank you for the moderator, Ria, that uh, gave me a time to present this topic. Okay. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, here we are. We will discuss about uh, can we improve our vocabulary through songs? Can we? Okay. Uh, I would uh, I would divide uh, this topic into two parts. The first one is the definition, and after that, a uh, whole songs can improve our vocabulary. What is vocabulary? According to Hatch and Brown, vocabulary refers to a list or set of words for a particular language or a list or set of words that individual speaker of language matches. We conclude that uh, the vocabulary is the main point or uh, like um, uh, the important thing that we can use in language to communicate with other people. Okay. And what is songs? Uh, Griff states uh, that songs refer to the uh, piece of music that have words, especially popular songs uh, such as those one hears on the radio. Uh, maybe we are familiar with songs because songs uh, has a big part in our society, right? Okay, and how songs uh, can improve our vocabulary? Okay, here uh, there is a statement from Lo and Lee uh, songs is, are, are invaluable tools uh, to develop uh, our abilities in language, uh, especially in four aspects. Uh, the first one is listening, uh, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And songs, uh, we, can, we can use songs uh, in a classroom to teach the student uh, in variety of language, such as vocabulary exactly, uh, sentence pattern, pronunciation, written, adjective, and also adverb. Okay, here there are terms of MFP. What is MFP? MFP is meaning, form, and pronunciation. Uh, how MFP can use uh, in a classroom? The first one, uh, when we gain a new vocabulary, uh, we have to know the meaning. What is the meaning? Or what is uh, the word refers to? And after that, we know the form. Uh, it can be uh, used on the past tense or future tense or simple past and any other. And after that, uh, we know we have to know the proper pronunciation of that word. And this is uh, the effective way uh, to gain or to present new language uh, in a classroom. Okay, here uh, there is uh, six steps that are suggested by symptoms uh, to uh, use songs in uh, to use songs 
in improving vocabulary in the classroom, the first one is listening to the song exactly. And after that, uh, we we ask him to do, uh, we ask him question about the title, uh, how the titles like that, and what the title refers to, and any other thing. And after that, listening to the songs, uh, listening to the song with the lyric, uh, uh, it's for uh, synchronize uh, what we hear and what we gain uh, from the lighting. And after that, focusing on the particular verb tense or aspect of grammar. And after that, focusing on vocabulary, idioms, also expression, and ending the lesson with creativity. It could be uh, sing a song together or telling a stories about the songs or um, maybe um, telling experience regarding the songs. Okay. And there are more advantage of using songs in uh, improving vocabulary for the um, uh, uh, Songs is providing a positive atmos uh, atmosphere for favorable learning. Yeah, because songs is uh, maybe has a, a profitable way um, to hear. And after that, students become more actively engaged and more actively involved. Exactly. And after that, uh, songs has always played a big part in our society. And songs has uh, also won a niche in English classes. OK, uh, that's, this is my references uh, of my topic today. And uh, that if there is any question, you can type on the chat box or send an email uh, to zenwar.girshad.com. And thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Kaisha, for sharing with us. Now it has been proven that listening to English songs can significantly boost our vocabulary. All right. Uh, now let's welcome our next presenter. Here we have Kak Shifa Hairunisa, who will deliver about effectiveness of vocabulary learning. Yeah. All right, thank you to the moderator for giving me the time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. I want to say thank you for coming to my presentation. It's great to see you all. All right, let me start by introducing myself. I'm Sifa Hairunisa, and I'm a student of Siliwangi University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about effectiveness of vocabulary learning via SMS or short message service. Okay, next. And here, I will explain to you about mobile learning. According to phone 2018, technology can become the wings that will allow the educational world to fly farther and faster than ever before if we will allow it. So. Do you know what does it mean? Yeah, it means that technology has changed the way of learning. It has rapidly been increasing over the years. And besides that, technology in the classroom is the newest innovation of education. Next slide, please. And then, do you know why teaching English vocabulary by using mobile devices is so effective for students? Baki 2010 mentioned that the type of activities focusing on vocabulary learning via mobile phone differs from one research project to another, depending on the level of language proficiency of the learners. Let's move to the next slide. So, how to apply mobile learning in English language classroom? As you can see here, such as Weber and Tangni 2006, clarify that there are steps of teaching vocabulary by using mobile learning. The first one is get your students to use mobile dictionary to define keywords. The second one is download flashcards, quizzes, and other helper access through devices, laptops, desktops, and Android. So flashcard is a popular application for learning and master what we learn, especially vocabulary. And then get your students to use a mobile encyclopedia to tell a brief account of some difficult terms with pictures. Next slide, please. After that, get your students to use a mobile camera to make a picture of something that they want to know its name in English. 
They can also take pictures of some vocabulary which they have seen and can write them. And then get your students to make a documentary of collected vocabulary, or in other words, is personal dictionary. After that, get your students to use a mobile to make a short movie or animation source of some vocabularies using pictures and flashcards. Next slide, please. All right, the next step is get your students to send and receive emails on their mobile phones to ask about new vocabulary, to send their vocabulary homework, or to send some vocabulary lecture to study. So sending email or SMS to students is a common way of learning new vocabulary based on the lessons covered in the classroom. And did you know that in a study, Kennedy and Levy gave the learners the option to receive message covering known words in new context through SMS to their mobile phones, amounting nine or 10 messages per week. And the result indicated that the message were very helpful for learning vocabulary. And after that, you can send a mobile message every day to explain a word. And finally, you can use a lot of educational games which in their mobile devices, so it makes them to learn faster. Next slide, please. So we can conclude that the SMS, next slide, please. All right. Uh, we can conclude that the SMS messaging of mobile phones is an instruction tool of great potential because of its high popularity among young adults. And then they could memorize the vocabulary in the SMS lessons more easily. After that, the immediacy and novelty of SMS lessons can foster students' vocabulary learning. And the last is it's useful and efficient because it urges us to learn English tirelessly. Next slide, please. Yeah, and here I have some references that I used for my presentation. Well, I think that's all from me. And thank you very much for your great attention. And I give it back to the moderator. All right. Thank you very much, Kat Shifa, for sharing with us. And it's very beneficial for the prospective teacher who will compete with technology, technology references. So uh, we can use this SMS technique or method and help our students to learn new vocabularies. All right, here we have other interesting topic on improving vocabulary. It is vocabulary and confidence. How to increase confidence in speaking English will delivered by Ka Muhammad Rizki Gunadi. For Ka Rizki, the time is yours. Well, thank you so much for giving me time. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Muhammad Peshfi Gunadi. So today, I would like to present, the, the title is Vocabulary and Confidence, How It Increase Confidence in Speaking English. So let's get, find the answer. Next. Well, firstly, I would like to introduction you about the correlation between vocabulary and speaking. But I believe some of you have already know about the definition of both. So I just, next to the correlation between both, from Afna said that when a student build vocabulary mastery, they can more effectively communicate their ideas, knowledge, and voice. So here, the point is that, Vocabulary become a first foundation to student to have a good speaking. Well, if the student have a lack of vocabulary, it's gonna be problem. So next. Well, after we know that vocabulary is a first foundation, we have to know about speaking challenge. What is that? It is fear of speaking. According to Johanna, there are some psychological factor that faced by the student in speaking English. They are fear of mistake, sinus, and lack of confidence. It is relevant with Leuti statement that speech difficulties can be affected by a person's emotional state. 
speech is often clear when a person feeling confident and relaxed. So here we have two problems in increasing confidence in speaking English. The first is vocabulary. The second is self-confidence. So what is the solution? Let's next. Okay, here I have extensive reading. It is a technique in teaching reading, which is defined as a situation where students read a lot of material, read for general, for overall meaning, and for information at one with enjoyment. So I believe extensive reading can be a solution for students to have to increase their vocabulary. Why? Because I have a benefit of it. Let's see. Next. Wow, this is the benefit of extensive reading. First, freedom. They can choose what they want to read. What does it mean? It means that the student will be freedom to choose the topic that they want. So it will be enjoy for them. It, it will be free for them. The second is developing vocabulary student. Extensive reading program is the single effective way of improving both vocabulary, reading skill in general. And last is promote confidence. Wilkinson discussed some of the benefits of it. There are enhanced bigger knowledge, improve comprehension skill, and the last is promote confidence and motivation. Well, there is the benefit of excessive reading. So what about the solution of boosting the self-confidence? Here, I have created a self classroom environment. There are four strategies here. First is get interested. The teacher should know what the topic that the student really like to speak. After that, they will speak up, they will speak much more in the class. Next is drama. Using drama technique can improve your student confidence in speaking. And also it can be developed essential life skill, such as teamwork, problem solving and critical creative thinking. Next is improvisation. It is help to develop spontaneity. You can use a game like a word at a time story, word tennis and scene dubbing. And the last is storytelling or narration. Everyone loves a story. So ensure that storytelling become a part of your class. For strategies before, have a same purpose that is give a change to the student to speak more in the class, speak much more in the class. In order, they will have self-confidence, they will be speak more in class. So next. Well, I have conclusion here. The student's problem faced in increased confidence in speaking include limited of vocabulary, mastery, fear of sinus lack of confidence therefore to overcome this problem student or teacher can apply some strategies such as extensive reading and apply a safe classroom environment so that's all for my presentation hopefully this solution can be effectively in overcome the problem so these are my reference thank you so much if you have any question, you can type on the chat box and many mistakes I did, I do apologize. Back to the moderator, Karis Viana. All right, thank you very much, Karis Ki. So now we know that vocabulary can increase confidence in speaking. All right, dear audience, I remind you once again to fully attendance on the link provided in the chat box and you can type your question if you have any in the chat box. All right, here I have our last presenter who will deliver about how to teach vocabulary for kids, who will be delivered by Ka Amelia Nurbani Amin. For Ka Amel, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Fia, for uh, giving me a time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mm. Hello, guys. Uh, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now uh, I'm Amelia Mani Amin from English Education Department, Siliwang University. 
Now I wanted to share you about how to teach vocabulary for kids. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Learning English is what people do when uh, they want to use the English language. In language learning, we often talk about language skills and language systems. Language skills include speaking, listening, reading and writing, and then uh, language skills, sorry, language systems include lexicon or vocabulary, and then structure or grammar, pronunciation, and last is functions. Okay, next slide, please. Vocabulary uh, is a set of familiar words within a person's language. When we talk about vocabulary, we are actually talking about four related vocabularies in order from largest to smallest. They are, the first is listening vocabulary, is words we can hear and understand. And then the second is reading vocabulary, is words we can understand when we read. And then the third is speaking vocabulary, is a word we use when we talk. And then the last is writing vocabulary, is word we use when we write. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, now for help your child become a master of vocabulary, uh, with this script tips for boosting vocabulary at home, the first is have many conversations with children. Young children are like sponges, so it's important to immerse them in language right from the start. It's vital to talk to your child and expose them to different words. For example, you can uh, try naming objects and then using number word and introducing uh, introducing word uh, to their introducing word sorry introducing word that explain their emotion. The second is read and discuss books. So it's important to make reading a routine with regular slot every day because. Uh, Sorry, keep reading aloud to your child and you can build their vocabulary by choosing books. The third is action can speak louder than word. If you accompany your word with action, gestures or facial expression, it will help your child understand uh, the meaning of the word. For example, when modeling say uh, weary, you could do a sleeping, uh, and uh, your child, so your child uh, can understand what the means of the word. The fourth is help your child understand what the word means. Introducing a new word each day will boost your child's vocabulary by 365 words every year. Now, uh, Please make sure your child, the fourth is, uh, sorry, uh, the, fifth is, the fifth is follow your child's lead. This means emphasizing words that come up during everyday conversations and interaction with your child. If we talk about what interests your child, uh, it is more likely uh, your, child, your child will pay attention and learn new words. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, last is conclusions. In language learning, we often talk about language skills and language systems. And then for related vocabularies in Ardon from largest to smalls, smalls, they are the first is listening vocabulary, the second is reading vocabulary, the third is speaking vocabulary, and the last is writing vocabulary. And then about creatives for boosting vocabulary at home, they are uh, have many conversations with children and then read and discuss books, action can speak louder than word, and then help your child understand what a new word means. And last is how, sorry, at last is follow your child's lead. Okay, next slide, please. This is, uh, I have some references for my sources. Next slide, please. 
Okay, uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, um, Ka Amel, for sharing with us. So it is such a great presentation for um, the closing of our presentation session. So now we will go ahead to question and answer session. All right. It seems that we have already we already have uh, two question in the chat box from Pa Fuad. Here, um, I will read the question for the presenters. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Fuad from English Education Department. I would like to ask the first presenter, the main Kauti, about vocabulary learning strategies. The presentation was really attractive since the topic has potential to be applied in the classroom activities. My question is, what is the best learning strategy to be applied in EFL context to enable students learn English vocabulary effectively? All right, um, Kauti, yes. hello. Can you answer the question? Yes. All okay. right, please. Okay, thank you for your question given by Pak, Pak, Pak Fuad. Uh, I will try to answer the question the effective strategies for vocabulary learning. Uh, the effective uh, is metacognitive uh, strategy because metacognitive strategy involves a conscious overview of the learning process and making decisions about planning, monitoring, or evaluating the best way to study. This includes deciding which words are worth study and which are not as well as uh, persevering with the word one, two, two learners. Metacognitive strategy increase access to input, deciding on the most efficient method of, of study or review. That's all, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, it's such a clear explanation for the question from Pak Fuad. Maybe um, the other presenter will give an addition. Um, may I give an addition? All right, you are pleased to give the addition. Please cut up. All right, um, before I answer the question, I would like to say thank you for the great question, uh, Pak Fuad. Um, based on my opinion, uh, the first thing that we have to know to teach vocabulary uh, effectively is um, knowing the student interest. Uh, after we know the student interest, we can fit uh, the strategy with the student interest. Uh, so the strategy will be will, will makes uh, the student feel enjoy while uh, in the learning process. And it is based on my opinion also uh, that the best strategy is a determination de determination strategies because uh, these strategies is finding a new words and then guessing uh, what the meanings and then the, the last is checking uh, the correct meaning uh, on the dictionary uh, that that's based on my experience especially that um, that strategy is uh, I think uh, the best strategy to be applied in the classroom to um, teach a uh, teach, uh, new vocabulary for the student. I, I think uh, that's all from me, maybe from the other. I give it back to the moderator. All right, thank you very much, Karatna. So um, please, if the other presenter still have uh, the addition for this question, you can um, turn on your microphone. All right, it seems that no one will give any addition for this question. Um, I wanna ask Pat Fuad, is it clear enough, Pat, for the first question? 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Via, for your uh, opportunity. And Alhamdulillah, uh, the answer is really uh, satisfying. Yeah, so at least I can understand which one is the best strategy. Yeah, to apply in the classroom, it is really contextual. Thank you for the presenter. All right, thank you very much, Papua. So uh, from the statement from. Nine we can um, get the strategies we can use uh, in the class to teach uh, vocabulary uh, to our students is knowing the students' interests or using a the I'm sorry determination strategies. All right. Now we still one have one question left. It is also from Pak Fuad. The question is. My second question is, many English teachers tend to think that vocabulary, vocabulary teaching is integrated to other language skills, such as listening, speaking, reading, and writing. However, it tends to be neglected and vocabulary remains marginalized. What is the best solution to resolve this classical problem? All right. Does anyone have the answer for this question? May I try? Uh, yeah. All right. Please, Kananda. Well, um, thank you very much to Pafuat for for the great question. Um, maybe uh, is in my opinion, maybe it's not the best way to resolve the classical problem about vocabulary, but I think it will resolve the problem a little. So uh, we as English teacher, uh, we can add in the lesson plan, uh, the method of uh, like word bank book, because when I was in high school, word bank book was enough to help students to increase the vocabulary. So um, I think it can, it can be a solution in teaching vocabulary. Maybe that's all from me, from the others maybe. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Kananda, for the answer and for Pak Fuad. And I hope it is clear too for the second question because um, unfortunately, um, our time for the question and answer is up. So I would like to close uh, this question and answer session and also close our webinar for today. All right. Thank, yeah, you yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, Srinanda. All right. Thank you, Papua. All right. Um, thank you so much for all presenters and all participants for joining today's webinar. We finally come to the end of this webinar. So the conclusion is the most important component of learning a language is developing a vocabulary. The four language skills this listening, speaking, reading, and writing are all built on the foundation of vocabulary. There are various things we may do to improve our English vocabulary, but mixing English into our hobby is the most enjoyable way, such as watching television, reading, or even playing video games. All right, so that's all. Hopefully this webinar will be beneficial for us. Thank you very much for your great attention and sorry if I have make, um, made a mistake while, um, while being the for this webinar. Uh, see you in the next webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right, uh, but I'm sorry for all the participants. Um, can you um, stay in this room for a while? Because we will take the screenshot for the documentation. All right, please, um, you can turn your camera for all participants. All right, if you can turn your camera, please, um, because we will take a picture. All right, so um, here you have here we have a reaction feature in the Zoom. We can use this.
place, you can use uh, the reaction features. You can give a smile or love, and we will take the picture. All right. <laughs> so I will count on three. All right. Um, one, two, three. <laughs> Once again, please. One, two, three. All right, thank you very much for everyone. See you. <laughs>